didn't care much for being woken up three hours earlier than usual. Get the gun, boy. Where the hell was you? You was snoring too damn loud, so I slept in the spare bedroom. You better not have snuck Charlie Plunt in there. Me and Charlie ain't been together in months. You know that, sugar. What the hell's going on? Get going, boy. Where's the boy going? I sent him for the gun. Bring Mummy Orion 7 on your way back! Oh, Jesus! Look, Boise! It's Charlie! Oh, hey, Charlie! What brings... Oh, what brings you around, Charlie? Hey, yeah, uh, you got a smoke, Percy? Uh, I left mine on the table beside your sofa. Uh, I mean, at uh, my house. Nice going, yaffin' asshole. What did I tell you about banging my wife, Plunt? almost four hours and Kevin still hadn't gotten around to getting the gun because he'd gotten distracted by a squirrel and forgot what he was supposed to do which was probably for the best because the last thing the old man needed was another arrest for discharging a firearm within city limits the one you got for waking me up so effing early. Time to pay the piper, you fuck. You missed me, a-hole. Who's laughing now, you effing two-bit son of a bitch? Jumped on top of him. My guess is he was trying to get fruity with my boy. What's fruity? Our son is not the problem. It's you and your family. You're a blight on this neighborhood. Why don't you do everyone a favor and move? Go to hell, you dumb bastard! Will you please watch your language in front of our son? We're trying to teach him proper manners. Kevin didn't much care for anyone talking to Mum like that, so he decided Mr. Benson could use a lesson in manners himself. So Kevin bit his shin. <laughs> You're all a bunch of animals. Go to hell! We ain't no different than nobody else. Hey, hot stuff! Do you want to tear off a quick one before your fat son of a bitch husband gets back from beating up on them construction workers? <laughs> 
Now, if you a-holes will excuse me, I got some business to take care of. What's a quick one? Well, we'll explain it to you later, son. of a beating for one day. I've been beat worse, mister. So you can go to hell. Ah, he's too stupid to know when to quit. Your next prick. <laughs> You're starting to piss me off now. Get him going before Percy comes home. You coming back around tonight? Nah, I gotta work. How long you gonna be gone? Six days on account of I can't drive to the States because of the outstanding warrants. Uh, I gotta go the long way up to Thunder Bay. I'm gonna miss you, baby. Sleeping with Poise just ain't the same because of his drinking and fatness. Just as long as you don't find out nothing about us, because uh, I don't want to cross Percy. Hey, lunatic! Sounds to me like Charlie might be willing to cop up some money, so if you don't tell the old man, he ain't having relations with your mom. Lots of money equals lots of cigarettes and liquor for you and Alan. Even though Alan was an imaginary goose and only existed in Kevin's head, Kevin was still having a little trouble following the plan. Jesus, you dumb boy! Kevin didn't much like being called names, so he figured he'd learn the son of a bitch goose a lesson. Now pay attention this time, you little alcoholic freak! You sure can take a punch, Mr. Spencer! One time when I was in prison, a guy hit me so hard in the gut that he ruptured my spleen. The doctor told me I'd have to quit drinking, so I told him to F off and hit one of them. They put me in solitary for three weeks and I got withdrawal so bad I used to hit my head in the wall so I'd get knocked out and not miss the booze so much. Have you ever considered maybe fighting professionally? Ain't no way I'd pass the drug test. Well, you know, when I say professionally, I mean illegally professional. I organize fights down at the docks. There's a guy who's undefeated. They're posting 20 to 1 odds that no man can go six rounds with him without being knocked out. How much am I going to get paid? I'll give you $50 a round if you go all six rounds. Would that work out to 100? That's $200, you moron. I'll do it on one condition. Don't tell my old lady about the dough. It's a deal, Percy. Meet us here Friday night at 6 o'clock. You're going to make us both very rich men. You want us to call your bookie boss? Yeah, I got 10 grand says the dumb fat bastard dies in the ring. <laughs> hey, can I get an advance on my pay? I'm out of smoke. Sure, here's twenty dollars. Just remember what I said about my old lady. <laughs> They're ruining our neighborhood and corrupting our son. There must be something you can do. There's no law against being poor and dumb. Well, there should be. We're working on it. We just have to get a few more conservatives elected. But it's a slow process. We've got nothing against poor people in general. We just think it would make more sense for everyone concerned if they were just put somewhere so they wouldn't be in everyone's way. It's not that easy anymore. Ever since the damn liberal media splashed Davis Inlet all over the news, it's getting harder and harder to force people into poverty and then punish them for it. It really burns my ass. So there's nothing you can do? Not until we've got evidence that they're breaking the law. Now, legally, we can't set up phone taps and surveillance cameras. But there's no reason why you can't. 
Can't you just take them into an interrogation room and beat a confession out of them? Nah. The last thing we need is those bleeding heart Amnesty International people crawling down our throats again. Those people just don't get it. So, have you got a video camera? Of course. We have a videotape library of all the special moments in Billy's life. You sound like great parents. We believe in being active in all aspects of our son's life so he grows up properly. Boy, Daddy didn't give you your own gun so you could go around wrecking mine. Kevin was bored. He thought pretending he had an allowance in a bank account would be fun, but it wasn't because he knew he was only fooling himself. So he figured he'd open a new can of paint and play in his head for a while. Percy, long time no see. I got three months for shoplifting. I just got out last week. So you was away from home for three months, you don't say. Marty's gonna be a new daddy for the next three months. So what's new with you? My syphilis is back. Hey, mine too. Small world, huh? How's about a pitcher of draft? No problem. I used to have a shirt like that, except I lost it. How's it going, Percy? Hey, Charlie. Holy smokes, Percy, you working? My workman's comp finally kicked in. I ain't never gonna have to work again. How's about uh, sharing a glass? How's about kissing my fat ass? It's just asking. You're always looking to get something for nothing. Nobody likes the freeloader punt. <laughs> Don't give to charity, so piss off! Oh, I'm not collecting for charity. I'm an adjuster for the Gold Plate Insurance Firm. I'm conducting a routine follow-up on your husband's long-term disability workman's compensation claim. He ain't home, but come on in, maybe. According to our records, your husband is unable to work because of a lower back problem he suffered while an employee of the Camel Toe Inn. He's been getting checks? They just started, every two weeks. He probably got one today. It's routine for an adjuster to stop by and verify that he is indeed disabled. Do you expect your husband to be home soon? Not if he got a check today! That fat son of a bitch has probably spent it all already on booze and hookers! But he does have a bad back, though, right? Oh, yeah. I think he's uh, at the doctor's right now, getting rehabilitated. <laughs> How's about you and me running away together? I'm pretty good in the sack when I'm sober. Boy, 
I thought you were gonna take him this time. Ask him about the smokes. Me and Charlie was wondering if you could give us a few smokes. Just to cover us until we get home. I'll pay you back honest. Why is he ain't saying nothing? He's thinking. It takes him longer than most people because he ain't got the right amount of chromosomes. At least that's what the doctors say, but it could just be that he's stupid. So what's it going to be, boy? Kevin weighed all the options carefully, but in the end he decided he would follow the advice of his imaginary friend, Alan the Magic Goose. Tell the useless sons of bitches to get their own damn smokes. And if they got a problem with that, to leave you alone and take it up with Alan. You hold him while I get the smoke. Kevin didn't know what to do, and he was scared. He wasn't much in the mood to get his ass whooped and lose his smokes. Then Kevin got an idea. He took the pictures he'd taken of Charlie and his mom, and he showed them to the old man. Them ain't smoke. What the effin' hell? Hang on just a minute. Them looked like my bottle, Twan. Uh, funny how the lighting sort of makes you look like me. Uh, you know what they say, uh, the camera adds uh, 70 pounds. What did I tell you about drinking my booze and banging my wife, Clint? Showing the photos to his old man meant Kevin wasn't going to be able to blackmail Charlie anymore. But it also meant he wasn't going to have to worry about where his next smoke was coming from. You've been getting Wakeman's comp, and not Sharon. I earned that money, it's mine. You better start being a provider. I got needs. Uh, the boy maybe got some too. <laughs> the only thing the boy needs is the head that ain't broke. Ha ha ha, Boise, you always could make me laugh. <laughs> I got that itch, baby. How about you drink it home tonight? I'll make it with you a while. I can't. I'm fighting a guy over at the dock tonight. I'm gonna make 200 bucks just for getting hit a lot. That's easy money. Give me some money so I can go shopping. Get your own fatty. I gotta go. <laughs> Miss me. I'll show you, you cheap son of a bitch! Go get mommy the phone, boy! And an another Ryan 7! What are the odds up to? 20 to 1 says the fat drunk don't make the six rounds, okay? You taking any side action? I'm giving 5 to 1 on bones broken. More than 3 bones is an automatic double payout. And as a special one-time offer only, I'm giving 50 to 1 odds if the fat, drunk bastard dies in the ring, okay? What kind of payday am I looking at if that fat, drunk bastard gets a broken jaw and broken ribs in round one, a busted nose and ruptured spleen in round two, and dies from massive blunt trauma to the head during or before the fifth round? That's the illegal alien special, okay? It pays 70 to 1, but he's got to die from head trauma. Strokes, heart attacks, aneurysms, or acts of God don't pay. Ladies and gentlemen, your shop stewards and union heads, in conjunction with certain city officials and law enforcement representatives, is proud to present an evening of savage violence and unmitigated illegality. In this corner, the undefeated champion of illegal bare-knuckle fighting with a perfect record of 32 and 0, 22 by knockout, 4 by induced coma, and a record 8 by death, Gary the Grim Reaper Morgan. And his opponent fighting out of the corner over by them loose pallets. Some unemployed drunk named Percy Spencer. Hey, my smoke! Your freaking person and it's your goddamn life.
baby. Say goodbye to the government gravy train, fat boy. Get up, you fat boy! You think my smoke? with a soggy That was my last moment. Sorry, he ain't dead. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. Here's your paycheck, stupid. Let's go, boys. Mayor Jenkins, I'm gonna need some more money from the city to finish this project. I believe this is all the proper paperwork. Mr. Spencer, you lived. I just wanted to thank you for the work and the money. I was wondering when my next bite was. Eh, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'm kind of busy right now. No problem. Oh, and one more thing. Don't tell my old lady about the dough. Percy Spencer? Who the hell are you? I'm here to inform you that as of today, your workman's compensation is cut off. Don't matter none, asshole. There's always welfare. Now get the hell off my property. Freeloading leech. You got a problem, take it up with the government, stupid prick. Take more than a stupid government to bring Percy Spencer down. 